Hey, it's Jamie, and welcome to a selects edition of Eventual Millionaire. This is where we go back and find the best of the best, the ones that you loved from the past six seven years. We've been doing this a long time and there's some amazing interviews with amazing guests that you have not seen yet. So we are bringing them back. It is the Selects Edition. Let us know what you think and I hope you enjoy. Potent advice and inspiration from real self-made millionaires. Welcome to The Eventual Millionaire with your host, Jamie Masters. Welcome to Eventual Millionaire. I'm Jamie Masters, and I'm so excited to have Dennis Yu back on the show. It's so amazing to have friends, and especially when I read their bio and go, oh, you have a whole new title with a different company also, which we haven't even <laughs> talked about. So you're also CTO of Cairo Revenue, but of course, you're the CEO of Blitz Metrics also. Thanks for coming back on the show, Dennis. Jamie, it's a pleasure. We were like going over all the things. And so uh, the Dennis is the cutting edge of all the tech things. So I bombarded him with questions even before <laughs> <laughs> we went live. But one of the things that we were starting to talk about was the cool new tech stuff, especially in the realm yeah. of experts and thought leaders and that kind of stuff. So the ones you were mentioning were amazing. Let's bring everybody yeah. else up to speed on our conversation that we were just talking yeah. about. Yeah. So author, speaker, coaches, experts, teachers, consultants, people who have some kind of knowledge and they have a podcast or they do consulting or whatever. It's usually, as we know, it's one person. They produce content, they can speak. But then when it comes to the systems of their website and courses and books and learning management systems and all that, they quickly get stuck in the weeds because they're not technical. I happen to be an engineer who knows enough to be able to talk that I can pretend to be a marketer, entrepreneur person, but I'm really an engineer. So I wanted to show you guys some of the things we've been playing with the last couple of years, especially the last six months and where AI has gone. You know, this like black mirror, brave new world, um, West world kind of thing. It's, it's real. And I'd love to give you a tour of some of these tools that we've been playing with and show you what they can do and then what they can't do and where people get in trouble. I love how Dennis does it like a webinar. He's like, ready, I'm going to share my screen. We're going to show you all the, the secrets. I mean, but it's true. Like you really are on the cutting edge of all this stuff. And I remember when I had heard about these, I'm like, oh, that's that's yeah. real now. Like they're actually doing it in a yeah. way that actually is useful instead of like what you just, a thought experiment, right? So so please share what some of the things yeah, that we were we talking about. So a lot of people, they talk about this sort of thing, but they don't actually do it. We're going to actually do it. And this is... The thing that drives me nuts is that a lot of people, they just, they go to PowerPoint instead of actually showing it, right? I want to see how messy your desktop is. That's what I want to see. Hey, can, you, can you see my screen? <laughs> yes, I can. Okay. So look, you can see like That's I'm buying. That's real authenticity. Huh? Yes, exactly. That's yeah. real authenticity. Look Socks. at all the tabs I have open. I'm stuck with TikTok. We had a course coming out of TikTok ads with TikTok because they asked us to build a course. But the the one we were just talking about is conversion.ai, which is built by the founders of Proof. So Dave and Austin are friends of ours. And Austin's this is in Austin, which I think is hilarious. And full disclosure, I'm one of their advisors and I advise a bunch of people, but I want you guys to see what is possible here, okay? Now, you've seen GPT-3. Oops, <laughs> the heck is calling me? See, that's how you know it's real, right? <laughs> So what what do you know about GPT-3 and the Open AI Initiative? Not much. Keep tell everybody. Okay. So they're the the largest the biggest threat to humanity, according to Elon Musk and the founders of Google and other folks, is AI because AI is just so smart and it's out of control. But there's there's so much power. So. How does the government, how do, you know, FANG, right? Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google, how do those companies deal with it? They created the Open AI Foundation, which is supposed to be open AI, but what they did was they licensed part of it commercially, and that's called GPT-3. And there's dozens of apps that are built on top of GPT-3, of which this is one of them. So you're gonna see a lot of tools that are like this. And if you start looking, you're gonna see there's dozens of them that will write blog posts that will build Websites will do pretty much everything in marketing. They'll even, I'll show you in just a minute how to do deep faking. So we can deep fake you. We can deep fake me to, you know, understand that you, you know what a deep fake oh, is, Oh, I right? do. Yes. All right. All right. So th this is the scary new world that we've entered. And now you can see everyone that Jamie and I are having a chat here, but then you might wonder if you're watching this in 2022 or later, you might be wondering whether this conversation 
really occurred or whether it was generated. Just a couple of years <laughs> ago, my friend is like, because you've put so much content out there, anybody can be you at this point. I was like, oh, yeah. yay. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> and so I can't do anything about it. So don't nobody do that, by the way. Please. Anybody listening, so don't do that. Be, let's be Jamie and <laughs> let's start out. What, you, see the, you see all these different tools? Mm -hmm. So with an AI, even as smart as it is, you have to tell it what you want. You still have to be intelligent. So we can write a story. You do a headline. We can write a blog post. We can expand a sentence. We can do it in any language we want. Right. You have video topics on YouTube, you know, responding to reviews in a very particular humanish kind of way. There's so many different clever things that we could do. What do you want to start with? I want to write a blog. There's so many people that are like, I want to write a blog post, but they're really judgy okay. when it comes to writers. Got it. Do you want to start with the blog post topic ideas, the blog post intro paragraph hmm. or the outline? Oh, let's do an outline. An outline. Okay. So here we go. And let's do it in the voice of, you want to do it in the voice of Jamie Tardy or Sylvester Stallone or Donald Trump or funny or what do you want to do it in? Can you make it funny? I want to see if an AI oh. can actually be funny. That'd be great. So we'll use witty by, or funny. Okay. 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 And then what's the title of our blog post? Uh, good question. How, how to write a book. How to write a book. How about, let's be more, we'll just do this for now. And then we can be more specific, okay. right? Like what kind of book is a nonfiction? Who's it for? You know? Okay. So here we go without really giving it anything except how to write a book and funny. It's now this is all generated brand new. This is not copied from the internet or anything like that. And it'll take a minute or so. It'll, it'll pop up here. Okay, here it is. So remember, this is the blog post outline and each of these outline points, you're going to expand into a paragraph and then expand it even further, add in images and links and all these other things we'll talk about in a minute, right? So look, you can see we have a few of these outputs and some of you might like or not like. Can you right? can you read some of them out loud so that way people that yep. are on audio only can hear them? Because my jaw has dropped, by the way, people. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, write the title. Two, draw a picture of what your book will look like. Three, write down all the things you know about your story, including characters and setting. Four, decide on a genre for your story, mystery, adventure, romance, etc. Five, create an outline with chapters and scenes to follow. Six, start writing, be creative and have fun. Seven, read back what you wrote, make sure it makes sense or ask someone to read it. Eight, keep going till you reach the end. Nine, put some pictures in it. Ten, make sure. Okay, so this goes this goes on and on with lots of examples. But let's be let's try another one okay. instead of how to write a book. How about something else that we could structure? I don't know, how to how to <laughs> right? How to interview a pro? Ooh. And let's do it in the voice of oh, who's who's the guy who drops the f bombs all the way? Samuel L. Jackson. Okay. <laughs> And you can even put my name in, in here, too. And the thing is, it's it's looking at all the things that Samuel L. Jackson or Jamie Tardy has ever done, and it will write in the tone of that person about that topic. And let's choose four outputs, and we're going to do that in English. We can do it in Spanish and German and other languages, and my friends who are multilingual will say it's right on. It has the nuances. It's not just some kind of crappy Google Translate. So I never right? have to write again is really what you're saying. Mm, you <laughs> This will, this will get you 90% of the way there. Then you have to add in your parts. You have to add in your stories because the AI is just pulling from the internet. Now, it's crazy what the AI knows, right? How to interview a pro. Number one, step one, prepare for the interview. Step two, plan your questions. Step three, get on Skype with the pro and have them walk you through their process. Now, they said Skype, maybe because they know that we're on we're Skype. On Who knows? Skype. Step right. four, ask follow-up questions to get a better understanding of what they do, how they do it, and why they recommend that approach. Step five, write down your thoughts after the interview. Anyway, it goes on and on, okay? Look, and, and it may even know that we were talking about writing a book. Step one, pick a topic you're passionate about. Step two, brainstorm ideas for your book. Step three, write down the first sentence of your book. Step four, keep writing until you have at least 50 pages written, <laughs> edit, work it. Right. It's so weird. that's example of one of these tools. Now let's go yeah, back and try another awesome. of these tools. Let's do the creative they have story. The ADA framework, man. I haven't even been yeah. in this. Yeah, they, the PAS framework. Oh. Yep. Last month, I was driving to to have lunch with Dave of Conversion.ai, <laughs> but the crazy ice storm foiled my plans and let's do it in a tone of donald trump or no let's do it in a tone of oh witty yeah witty sounds good okay all right 
And it takes just a minute because it's having to generate this whole thing. And there's there's several levels behind GPT-3. There's ones where it'll generate something quick and dirty, and there's ones that are more sophisticated, but they cost more. They, they charge you based on number of credits. Oh, okay. So okay. conversion.ai will charge you based on the number of basically words, but then they're paying to use GPT-3. I have an unlimited plan, which is very special. So if you reach out to me, I can get you a, I have a very special deal. Crazy ice storm, huh? I was <laughs> driving to have lunch with David for conversion today, but the crazy ice storm followed my plans. It's been a long time since I've seen such a freakish amount of snow in the city before Christmas and the timing couldn't be worse. The roads were slick and icy. As they, they just poured water on them and left it there to freeze overnight for some reason. This is one of those times when you wish you had four wheel drive or something else that would get me around these damn puddles without slipping all over the place like an idiot who didn't know how to work their brakes correctly. The weather forecast warned of a storm. I checked my phone to see if Dave's company was closed, but the site seemed to be down. Confused and frustrated, I tried to call him at work on his mobile, but no one answered. Knowing he's in an area affected by the storm, I thought about he must have been out there driving around with everyone else while trying to get home safely from work. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just right? thinking my kids are going to use this for every creative writing project. I could never give them access to this because <laughs> they... Yeah. The wow. IDA framework? Sure, let's do that. So let's say there's something you want to sell. What do you want to sell? Uh, what was Neville's old company? What lights for oh, raves or something like that? <laughs> yeah, a copywriting course or something. Oh, that's yeah, that's what he sells now. He used to do rave paraphernalia. <laughs> oh, okay, rave. Well, it's called rave. <laughs> Maybe that's not a good one to be looking up live. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds bad. All right, maybe we'll see. <laughs> let's, let's say that the copy. Okay, smart. Uh, copyright. Is, course, thanks for getting okay. me back on track. <laughs> You can do whatever you want. And okay, so what is the description? Learn, I don't know. Learn how to be a pro copywriter from Neville. How do you spell it? Is it M-A-D-H-O-R-A? How do we spell it? I don't know. Medora. Medora. Yeah. M-E. Uh, yeah. Spell it. D-O-R-A, I think. Yeah. He'll he'll be mad if I get it wrong, but you know. Yeah, I'm just obviously misspelling <laughs> it. Yeah. And let's do, okay, can you spell your name? Oh, I might oh, type in masters, masters instead tardy. of tardy because hopefully it'll okay. actually know who I am now. Okay. So let's, and of course you want to put in more. I only put in 52 characters yeah. out of 600 mm, to be persuasive. Sell, um, write good landing pages, uh, good, good copy. I don't know for landing pages. I don't know. I mean, so many of my clients redo their emails based on this framework. And if they just have a shortcut now, <laughs> they're going to, wow. Okay. So you, everyone understands the IDA framework, awareness, interest, desire, action. It's four stages that you step people through, right? So here it is. It's taken what we have and broken it into IDA already. Attention. Do you want to learn how to write copy that sells? Interest. You can be a pro copywriter in just 10 days. Neville Medora, the world's leading expert on persuasive writing and landing pages, will teach you everything he knows about how making sales with words. This course is designed for beginners who have never written any copy before, as well as experienced writers looking for new tips and tricks. That's interest. Desire. Neville's helped some of the most successful companies in the world grow their businesses by teaching them how to use words more effectively. He'll show you his proven methods so your business can also start making money from its marketing efforts. And it doesn't matter if you're an entrepreneur or work at a large company. This course will help anyone become better at selling with words. Action. Click here now to sign up for copywriting course. This, they write way better than me. I love this. This is better. The machine, look, you know that Big Blue and all these programs will beat you in chess. They will beat you in whatever game. They will outplay the piano. They'll do everything. And this is the robot out marketing us, out writing us. Conversion, so I, I'm not an affiliate, by the way, everybody, you know, and I, I heard of it, but I didn't realize it was going to be this great. So now I actually have to go get it. Thanks. Thanks, Dennis and Dave. Now, <laughs> Now you guys have zero excuse. Seriously, yay! Or write. Oh, I gotta get a blog post out. Great, done. Two That's minutes. Awesome. I'm done with my blog post. Right. I'm wondering what Google's gonna do from an SEO standpoint because they're not gonna be able to tell whether it was auto generated or human wrote it. Wow. Right. What does yeah. What does this mean for SEO? What does yeah. this mean for podcasts? What does this mean for all this? Okay. So this is. You have to admit. You agree. This is pretty exciting yep. from a text standpoint. Yes. Right. Oh, okay. I know. Now I'm scared. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, but it also has it also has like Facebook ads and like a whole bunch of other things that people would have to learn a lot of skill to actually be good at, and they will be better than you. The computers, the AI yeah, will be better than you. Yeah, I, I've tested it. The computer is better than me at writing copy, and I've written a lot of copy. I you feel like I'm so a pro. Much. It's yes. beating me. Yeah, it's not even fair, really. 
That's all like, the effort it's, it's, that you've made, Dennis, is now because anyone can be like you now. What the heck? Well, imagine that you were like me, and like I actually was a Division One cross country athlete, right? I ran the mile, I ran the 10K, I ran a 407 mile, if you can believe that or not. And that took a lot of effort. We were riding 100 miles a week to get to that point. But imagine someone invents a bicycle, and now some fat slob is going to beat me, even if they haven't worked out at all because they're on a bicycle. That's how it feels. Yep. Okay? I've been working and training and training, and someone just beats me because they have a bicycle and I don't. Wow. That's, te that's what technology yep. does. Well, I knew okay. it was coming. Like, that's the thing. You talk about the singularity and blah, blah, blah. It's just I haven't okay. put it in – I haven't seen it in an application that was extremely useful yeah. like this beforehand. Yeah. So. so think if you're an author, speaker, coach, podcaster, whatnot, think about maybe past podcasts that you've done. Think about things like that that you could turn into a book if you just had the time. You can literally take a one-hour episode and turn it into a book if you have chapters. I'm going to show you how we did that. Okay. So one of my friends is a chiropractor – and he did a podcast, this one hour podcast on the vagus nerve and how it affects your health and whatnot. And we literally just turned it into a book. And here's the book, the Vegas Demystified ebook. Wow. Looks nice. Yeah. The vagus nerve is this one that's right at the bottom of the skull. And it's called the, I think the suicide nerve or something. Cause it, if, if people have pain, it's so bad. People want to kill themselves. Because it's 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 where the central nervous system connects to the brain stem and all this stuff. So they did a one hour webinar, a YouTube link, and then we took that YouTube and we pumped it through our different tools, and it generated this whole book. And now you know we're publishing it on Amazon and all these other sorts of places. Here, let me just go ahead and download it so you can see. Right. Now, is it a fancy kind of book? No, but it's good enough because most people don't even read the books anyway. So here, <laughs> here's the book. Well, and, and even plus, if it's just a first draft and you just have to tweak it, that's you have a whole book. Yeah. Now, what I don't want to do is represent that we just click one button and it was done mm -hmm. because when they, when people speak, it's not as clear as when you turn it into words and chapters. So you can see here's the outline of the book, right? And this, of course, follows the topic points for the webinar they had. And they had slides. So we pulled in the slides and we pulled the words out of here, transcribed them, and then we ran it through conversion.ai using one of their tools, I think it's called talk to me like a five-year-old because this is a heavy medical, yep. th these doctors like to use medical words that confuse people. So we ran it through and there's also another tool in here that's called the content cleanup or whatever improver, content improver. Okay. So here, this one, content improver. So literally you take a piece of content and then it'll improve it. So let's just took. Can we let's put my take, whole book in there? Because that's I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay, so let's say, let's say something with you and me. Okay, and let's take a piece of text. Mm, this is not even good. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll just take this. These are actually pretty decent, but let's just say here's a piece of content. Okay, actually, no, here's one. Here's a piece of content. Repurpose your stuff. Okay, let's say this is these were words. Actually, I can grab words out of here. Out of Descript or where's my Descript? Descript here it is. All right. So I've got I've got all of these. Now I'm switching tools. I'm, now I'm going what's into Descript. Descript. Okay. Yeah. What's Descript? Descript started a few years ago, mainly for podcasters. And what it would do is pull in the audio mm -hmm. and transcribe it, just like you would mess with a Word document mm -hmm. or a WordPress blog post. And you could edit the audio by edit. So on one side, you have the audio. And the other side, you have the words, right? So you come in here. Uh, here's one from yesterday. How did I not so know that? So if I said someone's name wrong, I can change it? Yeah, you can fix it. Here it is. Now now look at this. Now here's here's a video. And I'm going to hit play. I'm going to turn it down a little. I, I can read you. So don't think I, I can't tell. How's that? Better? Your left side might just be more sensitive. We're not symmetrical as human beings. What do people say in surgery? God didn't make straight lines. My tattoo artist said when I was talking about my eyebrows, they're sisters, not twins. Is that true of your breast? Yes. It's true of your breast. Okay, so this is video that I took on my iPhone. Okay. Right? And we upload it here into Descript. And then Descript is already pulling out these different words. Mm -hmm. And now I can edit this here. And when I edit this, Let's say I didn't want to say breasts. Is it true of your breasts? I can say, is this true of your toenails or whatever? And we could do that, right? Or I could just get rid of it. And it will or say it in say, her voice. Yeah. 
Yeah. But then there's some other things that's, that's called overdub. Mm -hmm. So we can, we can have, if we read in the words the right way and we agree to the terms saying, yes, I give permission for Descript to be able to use my voice and make copies of it in different ways, then we can have it say whatever we want in whatever tone. And it is, if you listen really carefully, you can tell that it's not real. But if you're not, unless you're really paying attention, you're not going to know. Well, we talk so okay. fast, right? And we're so used to a lot yeah. of information at once, man. Yeah. Huh. Now, now think about this. So, so Jamie, you and I have got a lot of video. So forget about the whole deep fake thing just for a minute, just from the ease of taking this. Let's say that I want to get rid of part of, you know, my tattoo artist said, maybe I didn't, maybe I don't want this, right? And I can just get rid of that like that and it's gone, right? And then I can play from this section and said, and now I'll say my, my tattoo artist said, they're sisters, not twins. Here we go. Tattoo artist said, they're sisters, not twins. Is that true of your breaths? Okay, you wow. see that? Now I edited that. I'm editing video just like I'm editing words. Yeah, in a I was document. trying to look at the video to see if I could see the, yeah, okay. It's editing, it's editing all of these. So now I can yeah. turn these in articles. I can turn these in all kinds of different sorts of things. This is why I talked to you, Dennis. Tell me all the things because I didn't even know that existed. <laughs> I'm just killing Working all the tricks. The dish is not supposed to show all the stuff. All right. Now you want to see, you want to go a step deeper. Oh, I mean, now, you're warming me up. I don't know. <laughs> this is like a red pill or a blue pill. Yeah, moment. exactly. Oh, God. All right. Now here's what we're going to do. I'm going to... Oh, what is this? Chris Lamb just sent something to me. I'm going to stop sharing my screen because I want you to share your screen. Okay. Okay. For, I don't have anything yeah. on my screen except for you, but okay. <laughs> That's okay. I'll open up, a, open up a new tab okay. and go to financialfreedommovement.com. Oh, it's slow. Hold on. Oh, now my, hold on. My All computer's right. having an issue. Uh-oh. Yeah. Can you actually see my screen? There we go. Yeah, I see your screen. There it is. You're on Slack. All right. Yeah. What do you want me to go to? Go to financialfreedommovement.com. Movement. And this is something that's not going to be released for a little while, but we're just going to play so I can show you okay. where things are going. And then click on the, the play button there, and there's a little unmute thing there too in the corner. Oh, no, that's what's-his-face. <laughs> it's what's-his-face. Yeah, do you, yeah. Do you see the uh, – yeah. Very loud in my ear, yes. What was that? Okay, so yeah, go ahead and hit play. Okay. I'm, I hope the audience can hear it too. Well, it'll, yeah, it's only coming through my headphones because I don't have it here. I can unplug. Okay. Hold on. Let's see if this works. Between me, there we go. Dennis, and Armani on who <laughs> has to drink the toilet water. So make your decision below. <laughs> make a little bit bigger too. Right. Expand so okay. your decision below. I'm going to, I'm going to pick Dennis. Okay. <laughs> pick Dennis. Good job. Oh my goodness. I thought you for sure you'd <laughs> now, so you have to drink the toilet water. Right, here it is. But guys, this is uh, not only some form of entertainment where we're doing a challenge to drink toilet water, but you guys are now engaged as viewers. It's always good in intros of videos, in marketing, in business pitches to intrigue people right away, give people a reason to watch right away because then more people are going to stay tuned and listen to whatever it is that you want to say. That's right. So don't do this at home. <laughs> it can't be real toilet, toilet water. water. Oh, yeah, watch. Aww. That's his house. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, he was a life straw. That's different. <laughs> that's a life straw. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Phew, I do that. How is that? Oh! But the key is interactivity. Now think about how you might build interactivity in your videos. Savage. Think about it. That's beautiful. Oh, man. Little... No, hang on, hang on. No, keep, keep going. No, hang keep on. Going. Okay. I yeah. want to be able to inspire tens of thousands of kids to, A, get active with their careers and their businesses and their entrepreneurship and their content and their personal branding and give them a roadmap that I never had. And I made so many mistakes going through my career. I wish there was people or experts that I could just have watched and learned so much from to eliminate all the mistakes that I was going to make along the way. And I want to create a community, a network of people that are all striving towards the same goal, which is freedom and happiness. And See? that's a byproduct of being financially free. How much more power is, is uh, one more scene? One more scene. Just let it, let it go. Okay. <laughs> just so you can see. This. In one year. Oh, it's not much. It's like 30 or 50. I'll pick 50. 50,000. Yeah, that's a little bit 
too high. Ugh. That's awesome. I want you guys to guess how much the average American Oh, it makes, makes me pick again because year. I was wrong? <laughs> yeah. $30,000. 30000 That is the correct answer according to the U.S. Census. It's roughly around $31,000 a year, which is average to $15 an hour if you're working an eight-hour day. A lot of people are struggling and don't know necessarily how to succeed or how to make more money. Another question. How many people do you think in America are living paycheck to paycheck? Eh, hold on. How long will that wait for me? A long time? Forever, just keep looping. 78% hmm. that is correct. I remember growing up, my dad was actually living paycheck to paycheck, and it's not easy. It's very difficult. A lot of people are the idea. Okay. okay. It's right. funny because I, I just watched a Netflix show. I can't even remember which one that had this choice. I'm like, why hasn't there been more of these things? I'm surprised <laughs> it hasn't been so popular yet. Now, let's break it down from the standpoint of our audience of author, speaker, coaches. Right? So let's for a moment. So, so from a consumer standpoint, if you're a fan of Jake Paul, this is kind of fun, right? Because yeah. you're in, you're engaging. You're, he's doing silly things like toilet yeah. water. Right? You feel like, course, hey, you're awesome. Great. Yeah. And of course, you know, if you chose Jake Paul, then he has to drink the toilet water, right? Yeah. So we I all should have chose, I should have chose Jake Paul. I really should have. Sorry, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> but it's entertaining. It's fun. It's educational. And you can see there he's asking questions, right? And then based on the answers to your questions, because then later he's going to ask you, what would you like to be? A YouTuber. You'd like to be an entrepreneur. You'd like to start an agency. You'd like to become a video editor. You'd like to learn how to balance your taxes or like whatever. And then he'll say, awesome. You want to learn to be a YouTuber? That is great. I'm going to show you how I did it. And I'm also going to introduce, introduce you to my friend, so-and-so, who's a big YouTuber as well. Oh, you told me that you have this much money in your bank. You told me that this is your career. You just told me, Jamie, because yep. I can use your name. You just told me, Jamie, that you wanted to do this, this, and this. Well, I've prepared a plan just for you. Can you imagine that? Well, now, it's funny. My whole job can be replaced. I, people just yes. put in their business problems and I'll be like, well, if that's the case, then you're going to go do this and I don't have to do anything anymore. Right. Is that, will that work? So let's, let's go several levels deep into uh -huh. inception, you know, inception, the dream inside the dream inside oh, the yeah. dream, you're playing chess many steps ahead of the people that are in the game. So if we know that we can map these things, if we know that we can deep fake, if we know that we can create video and we can write words and other people's voices and whatnot, all these different tools, then why don't we take everything, Jamie, that you've ever said, everything that your guests have ever said, people who have expertise, and we take anything they've ever said and turn them into if-then sequences. So if you want to write a book, then do one, two, three, four, five. If you're not getting enough views of your video, then do this. If your landing page isn't converting, if you get a positive review for your business, if you're about to speak on stage, if you woke up with a headache this morning, if this one thing happened, then here's a piece of advice. Now flip it. Any content you've ever produced, any speaking you've ever done, any blog post, any Twitter, you know, Facebook post, whatever, any post content you've ever made where you tell somebody you should do this, that by default is a then statement, right? So and you, you should do this, you should do this, you should do that. Okay, great. But with anything where you tell people to do something, you need to have an if in front of it, right? So I would say, and this is going to piss off a lot of people, if you actually have expertise in something and you're telling people, well, you should drink celery juice in the morning because that's what I'm doing here with my Facebook cup, right? Well, there, you don't just do that because you don't want to give everyone the exact same prescription, the exact same recommendation, the exact same treatment plan. That's like a doctor saying, no matter what it is, I'm going to do heart surgery. No, if you're an author, speaker, consultant like you or me or these other folks, then your recommendation is specific to whoever they are, Right. Because it, it, you're taking the data, like the, the heart rate and the blood pressure and the x-rays, you're doing a diagnosis, which is here's my analysis of what's going on, and, th and then you're saying, and then here's what we're going to do for our treatment plan. Okay, Jamie, it looks like the x-ray shows you have a broken collarbone because you went skiing too hard and did a crazy jump, and then we're going to do this thing to fix your collarbone and take these pills to take care of pain, like whatever. It, it's this sequence that's logical. So take anything in your head, any content you ever produced, anyone you've ever interviewed, everything they've ever said, and then distill it into a series of if-thens, and now you've got an interactive sequence that you could call Jamie on demand. 
So how much would people pay if they, right. not everyone can have an hour of, or two, they, you know, imagine having an hour with Jamie every week. What would that be worth? I've been wanting this since I made decision trees back in tech support back in the day. <laughs> like, yes, yes. yes. Yep. This, this is what I've been, wa I'm like, I just need to record, I record a lot of my coaching calls, not that they're, they're confidential, yep. but I'm like, I could just input it all. And then everything that I ever say, and then I don't have to exist anymore. My kids can just, you know, ask it anything and I won't have to be here anymore. I mean, it's. It's crazy. How do we do that? Is that something that you can actually upload? Okay. Now I'm going to show you something. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I want it, but I don't want it. Oh, okay. <laughs> what? You know, the red pill moment? Like, yes. you know, you get flush down the toilet hole or you go back to the matrix and pretend like nothing happened. Yeah. As All long right, as I have a life straw, I'll be okay, right? <laughs> All right. Can you see this? Yes. Okay. So this is another one that we've made. I can show you the Jake Paul one too. It's called our teacher's edition. And here we're mapping out all of these decision trees, if you will, right? Can you see this here yep. where there's all these different nodes and they all map to these different things. Now, imagine, now it doesn't have to be as complex as this. I, this, this I've is, been wanting this for like, the, my, that's how I see it in my brain, by the way. So the fact that this can happen without me having to do anything would be absolutely amazing. Yeah. So at the bottom, you map your outcomes. So you as an author, speaker, coach, podcaster, expert, what is it that you want people to do? Hire you for consulting, buy your book, join your weekly mastermind, whatever coaching group, you know, buy your product, right? You, you can see at the bottom, there's all these things you want them to do, right? Mm -hmm. So what's one step up from that? Well, it's, it's the explanation of why they need that product, right? Or why they have the pain, which is the IDA framework, right? Mm -hmm. What's one step up from that? The questions you ask to determine whether they have pain, you know, BANT, budget authority, need timing, right? So that's what this is stepping through. And that's what we have with Jake Paul, with Glenn Vo, these other folks where we're at. Now imagine, forget about technology for a minute. If you're trying to close somebody, you need to have a conversation that's interactive listening, active listening, where you ask them a series of questions where they reflect the pain and you say, well, you know, you, you want to get more control of your time. You want to make more money. You want to improve the relationships you have, or, you know, have a better thing with your wife, like whatever you're reflecting back to them and understanding of what it is they have, right? You're, you're showing empathy. You're showing expertise. You're showing you identify with them. That's the initial part of any sales call, right? A qualifier meeting kind of thing. Right. And then from there, you demonstrate your expertise and you show what your package is. You show your offering. You show that you have a course. You show you have a book. You show you have, you know, whatever it is. You have, you know, you have oxygen water and you want people to drink your oxygen water because they have some kind of chronic illness or inflammation, right? So it's, it's the, it's PAS or it's IDA or it's, you know, con consideration, awareness, conversion, or it's what we call why, how, what, but it's these stages of the funnel that you bring people through. Now, if you can take anything you've ever said and you run people through those stages, then you're having an interactive virtual conversation without them having to sit through a one hour webinar that where everyone hears exactly the same thing. Imagine, Jamie, they can jump exactly to the questions, exactly to the part that's relevant to them. Yep. Save a lot of people a lot of time and you, your conversion rates, I'm sure, would go up a bazillion. OK, now I want to show you how easy it is to do because some people think that this is something that requires all kinds of advanced technology and it kind of does, but it kind of doesn't. OK. And just because people say, well, Dennis, I don't have, you know, a Jake Paul or I don't have all this technology or I'm not a programmer. Or it's just me. I don't have th this team because I, I hesitate to even show people how many people are on the team because then they'll just say, well, that's an excuse for I can't do this because Dennis has an army of people and he doesn't he's got the money and he's a technologist and I'm just a expert in holistic healing yoga instructor. I could never do this. Right. So I don't even want to show people that kind of stuff because that, that kind of flex, I think, would discourage people. Right. So let me show you what actually is possible just by messing around. Now, these are pictures that are automatically uploaded from my phone. OK, so here on my phone. You can see on my photos app, all these things here that I did a webinar just an hour ago there. I took a picture of it just to prove that it was real. And, and here's all these things that are on my phone. You can see they're the same ones right here, right? Right here as the same ones on the screen, right? And they're automatically being uploaded to my Google and Facebook and all that. And just a week ago, I was with one of my friends, Matthew Janusek, who's the CEO of Escape Fitness. He's got a big podcast, Escape Your Limits podcast. He's interviewed all the big people in the world of fitness. He's, he's a big deal, okay? And Mark and Matt and I were having lunch, just a client meeting in Phoenix. And 
Mark got the idea. Hey, you know what? Let's just do an interactive episode right now. I'm like, what? But we didn't have a chance to map anything. I was like, no, no, no. Let's just do one right now. I'm like, okay. Well, because normally we think, okay, well, let's write it out. Let's script it. Let's put a whole plan. Just like when you want to produce a movie, you have a script, you know, this kind of thing. So then here's what we did on the spot just to show you what happened. So we sat down here at lunch. Okay. We were having here. We're having lunch here. Okay. And then Mark literally put, pulls up his screen and maps out using Twine, which is our little interactive chart building decision tree thing. And then this is what happens. Matthew starts creating a video. Now, remember, he's the CEO of Escape Fitness. They make the fitness equipment. When you go to a Gold's Gym or a – oh, you got the sound going on. Yep, I wanted you to hear him. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll turn it on just a second. So when when you want to buy equipment, you can he, – he wants to ask you, well, first, are you a gym owner? Are you a personal trainer or are you an enthusiast? And then based on what that is, then he'll ask you, oh, you're awesome. You're a, you're a fitness enthusiast. Well, are you looking for tone? Are you looking to compete? Are you looking just to lose a little weight? Right? You can see he can, he can ask these questions. Oh, great. You want to lose some weight. Well, let me tell you about this kind of exercise and that kind of exercise and this kind of equipment, right? Let me refer you to a, an episode where I interview so-and-so who's the CEO of 24 Hour Fitness, where he talks about you know, what happens with gyms and how they stay safe during coronavirus, right? So you can see how he's asking a series of questions. Yep. And then it's based Ryan on the Lebex question. asks funnel on steroids. Ask funnel, yes. And then he's making the, he's, he's pushing you to one of his podcast episodes. Because I would ask you, Jamie, how, and everyone else, everyone's here, how else is someone going to get to a particular podcast episode that you have? Right. There needs to be an if. Yep. So they have to answer the question. And you say, oh, awesome. You're a gym owner. And, and you're opening your second location. Let me tell you what you need to do. And we covered this in my interview with so-and-so. Here it is. Yes. Click on this link here, right? Because like so on-demand he- learning is so important. Like we have so many I have people asking like, what are your top episodes? I'm like, well, it doesn't matter what mine are. What do you need? And then let me what just give you what you need. Yeah. So what is it that made Google and prior to Google? So I built the analytics at Yahoo. But what was it that made Yahoo or a search engine so powerful? It's that there was a box where people could type in what they wanted. But unless people type something into the box, you couldn't then say, oh, go to this web page, right? You have to ask the box, oh, what's the weather outside? Or what's the capital of Texas? Or you have to ask them a question and then they'll say, okay, here, here's the recommendation, right? So when it comes to learning, you have to be able to collect that just like Google collects that in search, right? So we call this the goal engine instead of the search engine. Now look, here's Matthew. Now I'll put the sound on. Okay. Hey, welcome to Escape. Good chance to take a Just curious, are you a trainer looking for some equipment for your home? Are you a gym owner designing new? So he kind of goofed that one up. But look, <laughs> you can see he's asking. Yeah. You can see he's asking questions and he's then answering. So if he, if he says, are you this or that, then he has to then record both potential answers, right? And then have a little bit of fun. This is what Mark came up with because Mark is is clever like that. Just at the end, because because you have you know it can't be purely business. You have to show a little personality. So then Matthew records this thing where he asks you, "Hey, do you want to see me lift these weights? Here, here we go. We're gonna open this one. Okay. So then if you say yes, are you, are you do you want to see Dennis do the black ones or the pink ones? So if you choose the black ones, then you see me do this, <laughs> right? right? Wow. Oops. But then if you choose the pink ones, you're going to see me do do the pink ones right here. Here's the pink ones. <laughs> and do right? It's dance. interactive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to do both choices. And then Mark decides to go a step further and says, okay, he asked, would you like to see me? Watch this. Hey, I'm Mark. Do you want to see me lift these weights? So yes or no? I'm waiting. So of course you say yes or no, and let's say you say yes. Then you see this. Excellent. I'm ready to lift. Let's do this. <laughs> you grab the pink ones, which are just out of the frame, right? Yep. All right, no, no. <laughs> now you can see what I did here. 
We didn't use any kind of tech. All we did was literally use my cell phone and recorded a whole bunch of these little videos, right? And you just sort of step through, go, okay, then it's going to be this, then we're going to do these two, and sort of, yeah. so it's a little bit yeah. easier yeah. that way. Yeah. So you literally can take a piece of paper and you can sketch out exactly how you want the flow to go. And then you number your videos, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay. 10, 11, 12. And then you send it to the VAs mm -hmm. and then they load it up and put it in the system and make it interactive. Isn't that so cool? So it's called Twine? What's the name of the software that does it? Twine is the software that allows us to do these sorts of mappings. Oh, the mappings. Then what's the one that allows you to do the the choices in the video? Because you, you just export yeah. it as a video? What's the what's the format? It's, it's an interactive video, so you can't put it inside of YouTube or whatever. It's a special mm -hmm. software that's called Lightspeed. Lightspeed. Okay. Yeah. And then we have Infusionsoft that's tied to it for marketing yeah. automation. We have WordPress for all of the blog posts and whatnot. We have LearnDash for the, the courses and the actual kinds of lessons. So we're using five or six different tools at the same time here. So do you use Lightspeed in your course or do you use the, the interactive software for in your courses also, or is it mostly yeah. just for the marketing to? You, you can do both. So if, if we go to financialfreedommovement.com, mm -hmm. then I could sign in and you could see. So what, what you saw first was an interactive landing page, this right? The interactive really landing page. I'm so excited. So basically, and you. Okay, and you, I'm going to close that one. <laughs> so when I sign in here, then I can see that, and, and this is once people pay the 20 bucks, right? So all, all the stuff you see for free is a landing page. So a landing page is free. People understand the landing page kind of teases you, ask you questions, give you little highlights. It's like a trailer of a movie. This is going to be like a, does, does he beat Ben Askren? And you're going to have a whole thing with that. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> all that, right? You yeah. know, he's going to, he's, he's fighting all these different people. He yeah. hasn't lost yet, which is great. And hopefully by the time you're watching this, he's still undefeated, right? <laughs> now, based on what you've selected, he's going to, he and I recommend, yep. hey, do you want to do, you know, want to be an influencer? Do you want to go viral? Do you want to edit video? Do you want to understand social media? Do you want to be an affiliate and do a shopping cart? Do you want to do these other? Dash, then? This one is on Lightspeed. Oh, okay. But oh, Light, so Lightspeed and LearnDash go together kind of. If So Lightspeed is if you want to do interactive video where you're asking questions. LearnDash this is... Oh, I was going to say, does it have to be hosted on Lightspeed for that specific yeah. software? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, this now this is LearnDash. Yeah. So LearnDash is, they've got, you know, th there's different ways that you can show your different courses, right? So you can say, like, here's our course on how to edit videos, right? And then when you click on this course, you see that I'm the instructor. You can see that it has these different modules and lessons, right? Mm -hmm. and then, of course, mm -hmm. you can you can purchase it, right? You can or if you sign in, you get access to it, right? But you can't so, embed a Lightspeed video into like LearnDash right now anyway. You could, but I okay. think you want to use one or the other. Okay. Yeah. So well, you can I saw see Lightspeed. What is, what is the, the way that you convert all of those videos to the interactive format? That's Lightspeed, but it's also okay. sort of a, a module course delivery system also? Yeah, so it okay. it not only allows us produ to produce what I just showed you, which is called an interactive landing page, mm -hmm. but allows you to organize these courses into lessons and collect email addresses and collect answers along the way. So as you're selling people, that was interactive. And then mm -hmm. as people are progressing through the courses, you can make it interactive and say, hey, Jamie, congratulations on finishing chapter one. I'm looking forward to seeing your progress in chapter two. Here's something I need you to read before you start. Right. Yeah. And then let's say a week later, you didn't do anything. And then we send you an email saying, hey, where you been? I know, yep. you've been, I know you've been busy, haven't seen you for the last week. Why don't you get back on the horse and let's get going again? Yeah, right? like I've seen that with the gamification for a lot of text things. I just still haven't, yeah. I mean, I'm, that's why I'm so impressed with the video. Like the fact that you can sort of sl make it slick and put it all together where you can pick where, yeah. where you've gone is really cool. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> the world we live in and in five or yeah. 10 years, it's going to be even crazier. It is, and all of these courses and programs and softwares are merging into one, which is sort of like this brave new world. So we talked about LearnDash, but LearnDash works with BuddyBoss, which is a social layer that sits on top of it. So think of it as like a newsfeed and a, a social reminder and points and leveling and gamification on top of it. Then we tie this with Infusionsoft, which is how we send emails. So if you've got a course, that's great. It can be on whatever course platform. It can be, you know, a Kajabi or Lightspeed or Thinkific or whatever it is. But then you want to be able to integrate it with email. 
And the emails have to be driven by triggers. And triggers are what people have done or not done after a certain amount of time. So if you map out all the things on follow-up, where let's say you have a free course or a free lesson, and you say, hey, if you like that free, that little taste of how to do whatever it is, right? Then you might wanna have my course. Well, let's say we have a lead magnet, which is free, and that might be how much money should digital marketers make? Then you say, hey, I couldn't help but notice you like my course on, or you liked our guide on how much digital marketers make by different roles and how much you should pay them. I thought you'd probably also be interested in our training for digital marketers. Because if you're hiring people, you probably also want the training. And we have a yeah, certification. Yeah. And we happen to offer this through Digital Marketer. Meet my friend Ryan Dice of Digital Marketer, right? So you can see you can see how you can use a lead magnet or any webinar or training or podcast and easily sequence it into something you're trying to sell. So right? question, because all so I'm a tech. I love this stuff. Most of my clients that would have that uh, wonderful objection to what you were saying, like, I can't do that. What do we call <laughs> this role, right? Like, I know CTO, but if they can't afford somebody that knows, you know, as much as you do, it's not a digital. It sounds way more than just a digital market used to be. I mean, that's just such an yeah. all-encompassing role. How would you define them hiring somebody that kind of knows some of this stuff? I call them course builders. And I think it's okay. a new role because you could hire a VA to edit videos. You mm -hmm. could hire a copywriter. You could hire someone to build a website. You could hire someone to configure LearnDash or build Kajabi or set up Membarium or set up whatever, you know, click funnels. And that's great. But all those people are going to know how to do that one thing with that one tool. And I've seen a lot of people like, oh, I saw so-and-so has a course and they put it on Kajabi because I'm going to use Kajabi. And I hired this Kajabi or I hired this ClickFunnels person. And then what happens? Yeah, it, all sorts of issues. I mean, I just know when I work it, with clients, uh, having one person that only knows one little piece and then they can't – because when you have this many different modalities – like yeah. one person knowing all of the things and having it actually connect and not have it, my my very technical term is janky, is yeah. hard. Yeah. So I, I see that – I see a lot of – I feel a lot of pain and my heart bleeds when I see people fall down. People who have good courses, they're good people, and then they hire these various people and then they blame those consultants or contractors. And, you know, maybe those people overpromised or they didn't know how to manage. And I really see there being two key things that are missing. One is they're missing a strategy to be able to tie the right components together like we talked about earlier. And then number two is then you hire people to work on each of these different tools and stitch it together. But yeah. you need some kind of overall plan, some yeah. kind of architecture, the, the, the blueprint of the house. And then you can hire the people that paint the walls and install the refrigerator and do the electric and do the toilet, do like all the different parts, but you need the, you need the architect first. And so I think a lot of people think either they are the architect or they think they don't need an architect. They'll just go to Home Depot and buy lumber and paint and wallpaper and then just all of a sudden yes. they have a house, right? Yes. They're like, I heard this was good and then I heard this was good and I heard this was good. I have no idea if they all talk together or not, but I heard that these were the best, so I'm just going to buy all of those. And you're like, oh, gosh, I, yeah. <laughs> Here, most the person people, I randomly well, hired, fix it. Yeah. Yeah. M most people just hoard tools. Yeah. And they, they somehow don't realize why you can't do that. <laughs> But but do you think it is getting easier and will get easier as things go that that things will seem or more seamlessly than they do now um, integrate? It's going to get harder and it's going to get easier. It's going to get harder because the tools are getting more sophisticated. It's going to be easier because the tools are going to decide for you a lot of oh. these things. But I think for the next two or three years, it's going to get a lot harder before it gets easier. Well, I mean, before we had Zapier, it was like, well, how do you get people, you know what I mean? How do you pass data? Oh, you have to write your own scripts or, you know what I mean? That kind of stuff back in the day. And so hopefully we'll yeah. get, yeah, if the, if the technology can do it for you, then we're all in trouble. No. Well, <laughs> then it's going to be well, wonderful. Look, saw, you saw today, because we weren't doing PowerPoint, we were literally exploring inside these different tools. You see how powerful these tools are, but if you can't tell the copywriting bot exactly what you want. Yeah. If you can't map out your sequences of logic all the way down to the products that you're selling, if you can't speak on video clearly, if you can't do these strategic things, it doesn't matter with the tools. So that's what we call, you can't make chicken salad out of chicken shit take. <laughs> I've never heard that before. So thank you for that. <laughs>
I love this, Dennis. Thank you so much I, I for being on the cutting edge, number one, and knowing all the ins and outs of all of these things and showing us the way. Even if people listening right now can't actually enact any of this stuff, knowing that your competition are going to be probably using this pretty yeah. soon is something really important for you to know because their conversions are going to go great. Their customers yeah. are going to be happier because they feel more heard. And you're going to be like, what the heck is this? So hopefully we painted yeah. a picture for you of what the future looks like. All right. So I have to wrap up. What is one thing listeners can do this week to help them for Forward towards their goal of a million. I want you to make a one minute gratitude video. And it's very simple. You merely choose one moment in time, one thing that you can talk about. For example, yesterday we got this new property and my buddy Alex came to help us unload the truck and deal with all these various issues. And we made, or he, he brought, he brought uh, Mark this, this happy cat, this little happy cat with the paw that goes like this. So I'd make a one minute video saying, Alex, thank you so much. That was such a thoughtful gift. I'm so glad to be friends with you and come on over for a barbecue, right? That is so easy to do. I'd ask you, Jamie, how often do you say thank you to people explicitly in that way? Great question. Not as much as I should. Right. And what do you think the impact would be if you literally just spent one minute a day choosing one moment when it happened, somebody bought you a Starbucks, a friend or a coworker did a really good job on a project. If you just made that one little video, that one little post, put it on LinkedIn, put it on Facebook and honor them. What kind of impact do you think that would, that would have after a few months, just one minute per day. Huge. Do you think there's any excuse not to do that? <laughs> no, Dennis, definitely not. Okay. You guys have it, right? You can't tell me you're too busy. It, t it takes you a whole minute to make the excuse. You could have made your video right there or your post right there. There and, you go. And whenever I get those videos, I like show it to everyone. Look, look how cool, look, look. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it makes everybody feel good. Yeah. That's why we send people socks with their faces on them. That's why I was surprised that you were actually doing socks. Like you're looking, you don't, you have tons of socks with your face on it or everybody's face yeah, on it. We have everyone's face on it. Yeah. We, <laughs> it's, it's so popular. We have a website called blitzgifts.com where you can order socks for your friends. I still have, and I don't know if it's here. I think it's still on my fridge. The, uh, the dollar you sent me from back in the day that I showed to absolutely everybody with my face on it. So you are the, the king of that for sure. It's a way Wait. of saying it only takes a minute. Yeah, I really appreciate it. And the gratitude shines. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show thank today. You. Where can everybody find out how to do all this stuff? I know Blitzmetrics is your main, one of the main places that they can just hire you to do a lot of this stuff, just so you know, but where else, where else are you online? You can Google me. You can see me on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on all these other sorts of places. You can also hire us and we're happy to implement these things. We have something we call the content machine, which is a thousand dollars a month where our VAs will take your content, edit it, cross promote it and boost it for a dollar a day. Thanks so much for coming on the show today, Thank Dennis. You. I so appreciate it. If you enjoy this show, I would really appreciate your wonderful words of feedback. Go leave me a review. I would love a rating. Whatever you can do in the time that you've got, I would so appreciate it.